Minute Waltz by Chopin. But it's really not the Minute Waltz. It's the Minute, Valse Minute, which means small. That's the name the publishers gave it. So this idea that it needs to be played in a minute, I don't think anybody believes that anyway, is really from a, a mispronunciation from the French to the English. It's not the minute waltz, waltz minute. There is another story that is more appropriate to the character of this piece, and that is one of Chopin's biographers remembers that Chopin got his inspiration for this material by watching a little dog chase its tail going around circles. And that's exactly how the piece starts. Can't you just visualize the little dog going in circles? Anyway, I love this chart. This chart has made my life so much easier because I was able to divide the piece down into the very symmetrical eight measure phrases that the entire piece is built on. The entire piece is built on a series of long eight measure phrases with a brief four measure intro. Now, what made this really difficult for me to teach in years past before I engraved this chart the way you see it here, in the traditional sheet music, the piece starts here, and our theme, the piece, the real beginning of the piece, being that the first four measures are intro, doesn't begin till the very end of the first line. And then we go down here, and then the next line starts right here, and so on. Even more difficult, and probably one of the most important things to watch when you're learning this piece, are the three different kinds of trills we have. And in the traditional music, we have trill A, there are three A, B, and C, A, B, A, and C, and these are so hard to find and hard to practice because you, you just can't see the patterns that easily. And that's the main reason that I made this chart, is to put trill A here and B, and directly below it, these are lining up measure per measure identically because it is identical material. Here's trill A again, and then here's trill C. So going through for the student makes it so easy. Trill A, B, next line, repeat, 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 trill A, C. That's it. So now going on to the next two lines, which really comprise the first section of this is an A, B, A piece. I love this part here. And I'm going to play the left hand the way I would recommend that you practice it some of the times to really acquaint yourselves with the bass line and the second and third beat chords, which have to be played light and delicate. So listen to this. Did you hear them as pairs? Because they are. note line which you need to bring out and sustain. So that just so lovely. So know that, know that so well as a part. This piece has five flats. You know that's D flat major. D flat major is one of the most user-friendly keys possible. Chopin loved writing in the key of D flat major, and the reason is because it fits the hands so well. It's the five flats are the three and two black keys, or two and three. So our hands don't have to curl up like the C scale. The D flat major, it's all right there. You can just relax. It just fits the hands so beautifully. You need to know that scale. So practice your D-flat major scale every day before you do the piece. Especially the descending. You need to know that cold. And I'll tell you why right now. System one, two, three of the piece. Let's do this right hand part alone. Here is our D-flat major scale all the way down to the C. Let's come up to F. C. 
same scale, coming down, down to A flat. I want to point out something that I find very, very interesting. If I compare the very end of the piece on page four here, and by the way, did you know that in the time of Chopin, the pages of the music were called leafs, leafs, and they would turn the leaves, turn the leaves of the piece. Well, this is a loose leaf form. So I can take them one at a time and use them as giant flashcards and compare like material without having to hunt through, let's see, page one and flip the book till I get to page four. Let's compare the very end of the piece here. We have, if we take the second to the last measure, first ending here and the final ending, these are identical. And that's tricky. So pay attention to your intervals. A third, down a fourth, and down to C. It's a great way of blocking. The first time we had on page one a measured run. In other words, it's counted with the beats. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. The last time we have a mini cadenza. Chopin starts not on this F, but this F. And he goes all the way down to the B flat on the D flat major scale. So if you eyeball this B flat when you're coming to the end, in fact, I circled my B flat and wrote it up here. And then all I have to play is my descending D flat major scale and stop on the B flat, not on the A flat like it does the first time. So watch this black key. And your end of the piece will be ironclad in your memory and in your fingers. You need to know your beginnings and your endings so strongly because you must finish strong. And this is such a joyful ending. I did make an addendum to help you learn the trills, trill A, trill B, and trill C. And I found that by lining up the fingerings of the right hand with the beats of the left hand, it made it much easier for my students to learn. So let's just take a moment and look at trill A and it sounds like this. With the second E flat falling on the second beat of the left hand. Trill B is it preceded with a triplet. the thumb on the D natural. And finally, trill C starts on the E flat, not on the F. This will take a little time to really internalize these correctly. And when any time you have similar material like this, it does become a little more uh, important to Practice them slowly and over and over and over again. Just repeat this until it becomes what I call in the bones. The fingers just do it by themselves. First trill. Or second trill. And finally third. All right, now let's just take a quick peek at page two. This being the second big section of the piece, since it's an ABA form, is really pretty much constructed on the dominant, on the A-flat major of D-flat. He even starts on the dominant, A-flat and A-flat in the bass. And again, as I said, it's absolute symmetrical, eight measures, eight measures, eight measures, eight measures. It's so beautiful to read. And not only that, systems one and three are very, very similar. And you can go measure by measure and see, same, 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 
same and same. So if I play my left hand here, system one, this is how, now remember this is a waltz, so we want to have a wonderful sweeping motion of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Twos and threes are always on the tiptoes, so play the chords on your tiptoes, like a ballerina. And then put your nice pulsing arms for the bass notes, just like you're stepping into the, the dance step. Step into it. flat major and this time our right hand has a wonderful variation with these grace notes which need to be played on the beat so the way I teach this your fifth fingers play together last system you have your harmonic change here here and here because of the difference in the bass notes you need to track that that's where my students always have problems in memorizing the piece and then similarly in the line systems three and four you want to know right here is going to be your change so it's one measure earlier here it was on measure one two three four here it was on measure one two three do you see how wonderful this is? It's laid out so beautifully. It's really a joy to play from these charts. I just, I hope you all learn it this way. It's just been such a fantastic thing for me. I live and breathe for this. And it's just a, wonderful to be able to share it with you like this. So have fun playing your Valsminute. Thank you so much.